Hi, I'm Miller and welcome to tonight Miller's Gaming Video. This month is Pride Month and to celebrate I'm going to talk about 5 LGBTQ plus games I recommend across multiple genres and platforms. So let's get straight into it. First one is Heart in the Woods for the Switch, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One and PC. So I'm going to start this video with a developer who I've really become a fan of over the last year as I've been catching up on various PC titles that I've missed even though this game did get ported to consoles, but semantics. Anyway, this game is a Eurovision novel set in the mysterious town of Eisenfeld, which the protagonists Maddie and Tara visit to investigate as part of a paranormal investigation show. Yep, this core cast consists of content creators and a fan. That's how you know if this game's set in the world near it, by the way. Aside from that, there's a lot more to this game than it looks at first, including fantasy, nature, and elements of the supernatural, and as they find out the secrets of this mysterious village, they find out they're involved in something bigger than they ever imagined. So as for the game itself, I really liked the relationships that developed between the core cast, which was really satisfying alongside the overall mystery and intrigue of the main story. Another thing is the atmosphere with the art and the music and English dub all coming together to create this very captivating atmosphere that really told what is a great story. It's so well loved, it even came to consoles with a physical console release via limited run games recently, and even a physical PC release from Studio Land themselves. So, yeah, we're getting physical PC releases for these games. That's really cool. It's also quite well paced, so you can see all three endings in around 10 hours, especially if you follow a guide, which is very simple anyway. So, I would also recommend it as a great introductory title to vision novels in general. I really like this game, very enjoyable experience, and I do recommend checking this one out especially if you find it on sale, which does happen pretty often. Second one in this video is Harvest Stella. This one is for the Switch and the PC. So this title came out late last year. It's a farming sim stroke action RPG hybrid developed by Livewire and published by Square Enix. So this game you go around in an attempt to save the world from the sudden appearance of a plant killing plague known as Quietus and when you're not going around exploring the world, you are farming on your little farm, and it's really cute. The gameplay outside of that is action RPG gameplay akin to the Mana series in these really beautiful environments that are themed around the seasons, so it's really nice with all this lovely variety in its world design. This was one of my favourite games of last year because this game feels so polished, the story is really good, it goes on a lot deeper than it looks at first glance, and this is shown in the side quests as well, they are fantastic. Each character arc is well developed and the story does go surprisingly deep too, including in these side quests you can just lose hours of your time just playing these side quests and it's really cool. And there's this overall feeling of old school Square Enix that's imbued in this game and it's really nice. Now how this game qualifies for this list is the non-binary character option. So when you start the game you have the option to build your character and you can choose non-binary and you can choose different character models that are normally gendered in other games and this is so cool. It's the first time this is featured in a Square Enix game and aside from that there's also changes to the pronouns which you can select. So when you select a non-binary you can be seen as a gender neutral they in the game and it's just so natural where the characters just refer to you as they. It's really cool and it just kind of means it means a lot you know. This game did get mixed critical reception, there were some issues with it, the demo had some which were fixed in the final game, and overall I think it is a fantastic game. The European physical version is £20 at the time of recording this, so if you're looking for a physical copy of this game I suggest jumping on that as soon as possible because I think over time this will get hard to find. And anyway, I really hope Square Enix take what they started with this and work towards an even better sequel, add in some voice acting, and it'll help a lot with the immersion, so definitely pick this one up, I wholeheartedly recommend it. Third one is Monster Prom, released for the Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC. Now this is more of a dating sim than visual novel because of the gameplay, it does have a lot of gameplay. But this game, to go back to what it's about, is developed by Beautiful Glitch and published by Those Awesome Guys. Yeah, that's the name of the publisher by the way, not just those awesome guys, as in men, these are an actual company. This is set in a high school, where everyone are monsters from various monsters families. You have three weeks to try to get a date for the monster prom, so it means going round, during the tables, going to talk to people, leading to some very funny skits, 
to try to woo them over and get a date for the prom. It's really funny and it's really fun. And there is a lot of content in this game. There's like 23 secret endings, 394 events, and 1,408 outcomes. And this is on top of all the items and the mini games. And also it has a multiplayer mode, so you can actually play this with other people, which is really, really cool. It's just a lot here, and it's a kind of game that you can pick up and chip away at over time, which is really cool. Every ending is almost guaranteed to be different, so unless you're going for 100% on the whole game, which will take a long time, you're basically covered. I really enjoyed this game, it's got a unique art style, really good soundtrack, very positive and upbeat overall, just that feel good vibe which I really love. Very memorable experience, even got the physical release from Super Rare Games, that's how I played it, it's really cool, I've had lots of, lots of positive love for it and if you haven't played it yet definitely check it out. This game later go on to get sequels including Monster Camp, which I've not played mainly because they're not on consoles yet or not physically, because you know, you gotta complete the set right? And the fourth one is Dramatical Murder, released for PC. Oh yeah, this is a game I've wanted to talk about for such a long time, because this is another game I was playing on PC as part of catching up. This title is made by Nitro Plus Chiral. Uh, this is the Boys Love Visual brand for Nitro Plus, who are most known in the West for Steins Gate and most recently games like Chaos Head Noah and Tokyo Necro, and also the other Nitro Plus Chiral release, Slow Damage. Out of Nitro Plus Chiral's lineup specifically, this game is the most popular, so you might have heard of it even if you're not into visual novels. This game is set on a fictional island of Midorijima in near future Japan and you play as the protagonist Alba Seragaki who gets sucked into the popular cyber game Rhyme and having to learn hand-to-hand -hand combat and how things work in this really bizarre sci-fi dystopian world and of course developing relationships with the handsome guys that accompany him on his journey. The best way I can sum this game up in a nutshell is it's a really cool combination of sci-fi grittiness and high-tech dystopia which is greatly helped by its atmosphere which further adds to the juxtaposition of this really light-hearted anime aesthetic and this really deep gritty music and chiptune. The character art and the environment design is great, the music is amazing which, which is where a lot of chiptune themes come from and I've even got the soundtrack physically because I love it so much. The story really goes places you learn more about the world of Midorijima and the rest of the core cast themselves and that's where the romance the guys are so cute so yeah, I really enjoyed them, and the overall world and the story is very satisfying, especially when you get to the final routes as well. I do want to make a full video on Dramatical Murder someday, I don't know when I will, but it will happen at some point. And a little fun fact, this game is actually banned on Twitch, because prior to the official release, a fan translation came out, and presumably Twitch saw this and decided to ban it, because yeah, this is like a lot of... Nitro Plus games, this was originally in Arogi, even though it's got a perfectly safe work Steam release and even has a PSV support in Japan, which has an exclusive route in it by the way. Anyway, I'm hopeful we'll get that route and the fan disc release in English someday officially, which by the way also has a fan translation as well, so you can play the after stories for DMMD already if you don't want to wait it out for an official release. Another thing I'd like is also a Switch port because, come on Nitro Plus, you need to bring your stuff to the Switch already, you're just as bad as Aqua Plus. And Aqua Plus actually makes stuff for consoles a lot now. Anyway, Che putting all that aside, it's a great game. Uh, it's Nitro Plus Charles' most popular boys love title for a reason. Check it out, it's great. And the final game I'm going to talk about today is an indie classic. A Celeste for PlayStation 4, Switch, Xbox One, PC, you name it, it's probably on it. One less is a Vita. Yeah, no Vita, unfortunately. Uh, truth be told, this is the second time I put it in a video on my channel. I did a retrospective on it back in January, but honestly, that video is kind of a bit of shit. So I've unlisted it. However, that doesn't mean I can't discuss it again, so here I am. This is a platformer by Extremely OK Games, where you play as the protagonist Celeste, who is trying to climb Celeste Mountain. Over the course of the game, you must deal with her inner demons, meeting many wonderful characters along the way, with a great story that just oozes neurodivergent charm and a strong emphasis on mental health and self-care. At the end of the final chapter, Farewell, this is for DLC, Celeste is revealed to be transgender, which is how this game qualifies for this list. That said, the gameplay itself is also fantastic. It reminds me so much of Donkey Kong Country in both its extreme difficulty 
and in its level design, the music is amazing. The sprite based art and levels is lovely to look at but the character hand drawn art you see at the end of each stage is even cooler as well. Another thing I want to mention is its accessibility settings. Now back in 2018 Celeste was actually a pioneer for accessibility settings in video games, especially for disabled people where things like the, in the ability to have infinite stamina and infinite health really helps a lot with these stages so even if you suck at video games you can jump into this one and have a great time. And at the end of this month, this game is getting a physical version for Switch and PS4 by Fangamer following the limited run physical release like 5 years ago which you can't get anymore by the way. And it's also coming to retail for the Switch in Europe so you haven't picked this game up yet, pick it up, it's amazing. And with all that said, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, share this video around, boost the algorithm. Thank you so much. Bye bye.